Good evening, YouTube. <clears throat> Fellow friends who are maybe watching. My name is Joel. I have a YouTube name. <laughs> the same name. Joel, um, with the last name Swats, that's W-E-T-Z. Okay, so tonight, um, I want to revisit a topic that I talked about probably about two to three years ago and have a YouTube video of it. About the difference between about courtship and dating. Well, what I thought I knew that many years ago, I will stand corrected. There are some things that I was not sure about. So tonight, I want to revisit some things that God himself has revealed to me in the last year and a half. I'm titling a five-part series. It's called Old Fashioned, Old Fashioned, uh, Old Fashioned Love and Sanctification. And the first part, the part fat, the five-part series, is going to be called the Trueness of Love. The trueness of love, or better way to put it, in these words, the struggle of genuine love and artificial lust. Now I want to start with the scripture and a passage. Because I pray that by the end of this first segment, we will all be more convinced. Don't worry. I'm not trying to preach at you. The only thing that I'm doing is stating a truth. We need to know, all of us around the world, need to know what true love is and what it is not. So please realize, I am not doing this to offend anyone. I am simply trying, of course, with the help of God, to un help other people understand. The scripture I'm going to use tonight comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12, and it says this, and quoting from the King James, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth God. I'm sorry. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. So then here in his love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, propitiation of our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, uh, one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. That passage, now hopefully to start off this five-part series, we're going to be talking about a number of scriptures used to promote the idea of what God's love is. And I will also present scriptures taken out of context throughout the series of what people think God's love is and what it isn't. Let's first ask ourselves the question, what is love? Let's look at the worldly view, the secular view of love. To be able to understand where love has gone wrong in this world, we must understand the definition of love first. 
And after we understand the definition of love first, then we need to examine when did love go wrong. And why this twisted worldview of doing anything as long as it doesn't hurt anybody. Why this went so astray. If you look in the dictionary, the definition of love, you'll sometimes see the words, it is a feeling, it is an emotion, an adoration. Love is a verb. It is also a noun. It's an adjective. It's all those things. Love is supposed to be wonderful, beautiful. But there's a problem. Somehow, we've lost track of love along the way. Somehow, we have become defiant and distorted and ignorant to the understanding of what true love is and what true love is not. I'm speaking of myself as well. Temptation. Well, if you'll put temptation and love together, that is what the world defines love to be. They don't see anything as a temptation. Therefore, they are desensitized to the ideas and the ordeals which they have set themselves up to be in a world system. Which means... The world believes it is okay to cheat on your wife. It is okay to cheat on your husband, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. It is our right to have an open marriage. It is our right to have an open relationship. It is okay to have sex before you are married. And I want to stop there for a second. Because I am not trying to condemn any of you. I too have fallen into that deadly trap of sin. We've all transgressed the law. More importantly, we've all broken holiness. All of us Christians have. We are born again spiritually, but I believe, this is my personal belief, you can take it or leave it, but I believe we are spiritually reversionized, apart from the physical reversionization. I see myself as technically not a virgin. Even though I've never actually had, I've had every other aspect of sex. Alright, I just wanted to point that out there. That, that's, that's a whole other discussion. But I'm basically saying, I am not better than you. I'm not better than any of you. We've all come short of knowing what true love is because of distractions. What is a distraction? A distraction is something that is pleasing to the eyes. It's something that blends in something unnoticeable at first. Then everybody catches on. It's like a fad. It's like a it's like, a, um, it's like a new thing to the world it is. Where did we go wrong with love? Well, the worldview says love was never about Christ, was never about Jesus. We're all evolved beings. Now, I am not trying to debate an atheistic agnostic issue. I am basically stating what is claimed, stating in a worldview. So they claim that we are evolved. Okay, number one, evolution is a theory. It has not been proven, nor can it be proven. For it to be truth, it would have to be in the Bible. 
The Bible is the basis for foundation, the basis foundation for truth of every single kind. Not to get off topic. So what else does the world view as love? Take the movie Fifty Shades of Grey. And this guy character, his last name is Grey. Does anybody know his first name? Um, if you do, just uh, comment on, on this video. <laughs> Forgive me for not remembering the first name. I never went to go see Fifty Shades of Grey. But let me introduce to you what Fifty, Sh mm, what 50 Shades of Grey portrays. Fifty Shades of Grey portrays rough sex, rough love. It portrays violence. But they say it's, it's lust. Of course it is lust. They say that it is good. Anybody knows that if you want real love, you have to sacrifice the things that you see around your eyes. And if you want real love, you have to be willing to accept any heart. Any compassionate heart. The physical attraction means nothing. And that is what I'm going to touch on as well in this segment. I'm going to be going to some scriptures on beauty. And I'm also going to be looking at what things the world calls beauty. I am not here to sell you religion. Or to sow discord among brethren. What I am here to do is encourage and exhort and hopefully with God's help him giving me the words to say that I will help an understanding of what true love is and what it isn't. So going back to the subject on Fifty Shades of Grey, a movie that came out the day before Valentine's Day. I never saw the movie and I never will. And I will give you the basis of the story in, a, in a 30 seconds. Fifty Shades of Grey. This guy by the name of Blank... Forget his first name, Gray. Based off of a book which has so much pornography and language in it, I am astounded that they even made the movie into a movie. Because if you read the book, the whole plot, the whole storyline is a triple X film but somehow Hollywood with their magic was able to make it in a movie the suggestive themes in Fifty Shades of Grey are as follows it is okay to cheat on your husband it is okay to cheat on your wife it is okay to look after lust after another woman it is alright to have another girlfriend on the side. It is okay to promote polygamy. I have never seen this movie. And how do I know this? God has shown me. And I cannot take the credit myself. God is the one who belongs the credit to everything. For I give him praise, glory, and honor for being able to understand this concept that I would not be tricked and to help you all using, of course, the Word of God and a loving heart that wants to speak the truth and not withhold anything from anyone because I am not God. But to show you there is a problem with the distorted love we have come up with in this world. The storyline follows of Grey, 
And this woman, and this love, lust, attraction. And it's all about physical seduction, sex. We see it all over the TV, the internet, the movies. Is it possible that it's trying to take our minds off of the truth about real love? Yes. Let's go back in time. 1930s. A day in history in Hollywood where you would watch films in black and white and you were not allowed to curse on national television or in the movies. You were allowed to say the words goodness gracious or Suffer and succotash, or let's say, how about fiddlesticks? These words that we use, have heard of, or fire hydrant, or shiver me timbers. As the years went on in Hollywood production of films and TV, slowly but simply, And I don't want anybody to think that God was behind Hollywood. Maybe at one point in time, Hollywood was pure. Maybe at one point in time, they had good morals. Not today. What is their subject on love? It's an agenda. It is a hidden agenda. To get our minds off of the real agenda. They introduced this woman named Marilyn Monroe. And she's the perfect puppet in Hollywood to get all the guys to go gaga over her breasts and the way she portrayed herself. But even she has quotes renouncing and wishing she never went into Hollywood because it is a darkness beyond darkness at the price of your soul. She didn't say exactly like that. But what she was basically saying in her quotes, you join the industry. It will destroy your morals, your values that you so say that you keep. And we all fall short of that daily. Marilyn Monroe was a beautiful actress, I'm sure. But there is a problem. She did what the producers and the directors and the people in charge of the films told her to do. And I'm pretty sure she did it to keep her job. Why? Because Hollywood was becoming to start being corrupt. It was already starting to become corrupt. They were craftiness. I was going to say, we're going to talk about what true love is and what true love isn't. Satan, the master, an accuser of brethren, the liar, deceitful betrayer, who defaced heaven, where iniquity and pride was found in his heart and cast it out of heaven because he wanted to be God. He wanted the position that God had. Just like there's true love in the Bible, there is a counterfeit for everything out there. And just like love, there is a counterfeit for love that looks, tastes, and even might seem holy on the outside. But on the inside, and I will use a word quoted in scripture, is like a whitewashed tomb. Or 
or whitewashed sepulcher. Love has destroyed. Or I should say, love and lust has destroyed families. It has destroyed friends. It has been the argument in relationships. There are Christians out there that seek to please God, the Savior of the world, the creator of the universe, who made the earth in six days, rested on the seventh. Yet they find a problem. And it's what they see in the world. They love, apparently, this new trend. Sex is on the minds of every mind's mind 24-7. Come on, we all think it. And we shouldn't. Some aren't as 24-7. For Christians, they're trying so hard to get away from it. Or should I say followers of Christ, because that sounds even better. So what happened? Why is love so distorted? Well, it all starts at the creation of the Garden of Eden. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 3, when Adam and Eve was basically the first marriage in the Bible, There was nothing that was withheld from them. They were living in the Garden of Eden. The biblical account in Genesis say that they were naked and they were not ashamed. But you go further on near the end of Genesis 2 and beginning of Genesis 3. Forgive me. Genesis 2, near the, uh, be, uh, the, uh, in Genesis 2 and in Genesis 3. The serpent was the craftiest creature in all the field. They were told one simple command in the Garden of Eden by God. That they would be allowed to eat of every tree, of every f- fruit of every tree in the Garden of Eden. But the tree in the midst, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it says in God's word in Genesis that that you shall not touch of it, nor touch it, nor eat it, lest you die. So the serpent comes along. And says to Eve, did God really say that you shall surely die if you eat up the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And Eve responds with the following, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may not eat of the fruit of the trees of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, nor touch it unless we die. And the serpent says to Eve, "You shall not surely die, for in that day that God does not know, that your eyes shall be opened, and you'll be known as gods, knowing both good and evil." Eve. And Adam fell that day. God was calling Adam and Eve in the cool of the day. It says in Genesis chapter, it says in the book of Genesis, Eve takes a bite of the apple or the fruit. Eve takes a bite of the forbidden fruit. And eats it. And then she gives it to Adam. And he does the same. And 
And God calls out to Adam and says, Adam, where are you? And he says, I was hiding myself in the garden because I was told I was naked. That's the other thing that Satan said. That they would know good and evil. And that they were naked. And God says, who told you that you were naked? Did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which I commanded you not to eat? And Eve, or and Adam said, Eve, Eve was the one that gave me the fruit of the forbidden fruit. So he blames it on Eve. And then, and then Eve blames it on the serpent. And we know the rest of the story. Perfect picture. Love of true, true love was established at creation. It was even before that. Established in the heaven of heavens. Or I shall say, heaven. Established a long time before. The beginning of creation, yes. But it was definitely instituted in heaven. So that would probably be at the time of creation. My brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of God, do you not see what has happened? The reason why we have a distorted view of love is because of the very first sin that we are all guilty of. Believing the lie That we could be like gods and know good and evil. I believe in the very beginning we weren't supposed to know evil. But then things would have been different. Who knows? But let's not speculate. The fact is we're all guilty. You look into the world today, you see the lust, you see the pride and the arrogancy. Why is it that most guys want to lust after a woman that is thick or that is irresistible? What happened to the heart, the personality, the compassion? The caring, the love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the goodness. What happened to it? It got distorted at the Garden of Eden where everything became a counterfeit for the devil to shake, I'm sorry, to creep his Plans. What does the Bible say on lust? Well, this is one thing the Bible does say on lust. And we'll go to different passages. First Corinthians chapter 10 verses 12 through 13. And I quote the following from the King James. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful 
who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Proverbs talks about another typical type of temptation. He that follows after foolishness prepares a net for his feet. Why do we fall into this treacherous sadness of temptation? What is it that we find so irresistible about the flesh versus the spirit? It's crazy to me that we love this flesh when we shouldn't. We shouldn't love our flesh at all. Because look what our flesh has done to all of us. Every one of us, including myself. I am not counting myself out of this equation. For to do that would be to say, I am better than all of you, and I am certainly, positively not. I'm on the same line as you all. Christian or not, Christian. What does the Bible speak on of lust? Well, let's go to Proverbs. Chapter 6. Starting from verse 1. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. For the lips of a strange woman drop as a honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil, but her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death, her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are immovable, that thou cannot know them. Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger, and thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed, and say, How have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof? And I have obeyed, not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Now I inclined in mine ear to them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. And that word also means the verge of total ruin. In the book of Matthew, it talks about what happens when we look after a woman. Out of the lust of our heart, we've committed adultery, spiritual adultery. Yet the world says it's okay. So they distort good and evil. Going back to Fifty Shades of Grey. This is what seduction and what a woman who has no respect for her morals and listens to the lies of the media. And the same goes for a man himself as well. I've fallen into that. Everyone has. Look at what the media has taught us to do. Guys to wear... I can't believe I'm saying this. For guys to wear Speedos. To 
take their shirts off as to find themselves irresistible? For one, I do not find myself irresistible. But many men out there do. I feel more like I am the minority. Yes, I did fall into trying to be irresistible. But God got a hold of my heart. And he can get a hold of yours too. Only if you wish to. I'm not forcing this on anyone. I'm simply speaking the truth in love. And now women, they wear makeup. And they wear thongs. And sometimes they go out in public wearing nothing. Have you not seen how women dress today in public? And they say, the girls say, well, the guys shouldn't be looking. No matter where we go, it is hard not to look. It's almost right in front of our faces. It's on billboards. It's in the malls. And now, it's in our towns. It's everywhere. When we get caught up in the world, when we go to the mall, when we go to the club, which by the way, why would it be right to go to places that will cause us to sin? Temptation! Jesus Christ himself wants us to be like him. But he knows we've been deceived. And that is why he wants to teach us. He wants us to be challenged and be able to unlearn things that we did not know that were wrong in the first place. How do you dress yourself in the morning? What about when you're out in public? Not just winter. What about during the warm seasons? Spring, summer. The argument is, well, Joel, it's a heart issue. And you've got to be convicted of it. I will agree. You have to be convicted of it. Yes, you do. But there is a problem when you are convicted of something and you realize it's wrong, and you do it anyways. And the Bible speaks that we have a responsibility if we are to know what true love is. We are responsible for our actions. Are we responsible for the way we dress? Absolutely. Are we responsible for the way we treat our girlfriends, boyfriends, wives, husbands, absolutely. We are most definitely responsible. To say we are not responsible, we are all liars. And we will not be counted. Amongst. The book of Luke chapter 12. We've all been unfaithful. True love is faithful. Listen to the words that the Messiah himself, Jesus the Christ... Him crucified, now he is resurrected. Starting from verse 42. This is a parable of the unfaithful servant. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make 
ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But and, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Punished severely, in other words. But he that kneweth not, he knew not, and did commit things worthy of stripes, shall be beaten with few stripes. The lesser punishment. Or lesser suffering. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. The parable of the faithful of the unfaithful servant. We've all been unfaithful. So do we have a job? Or should I say, should it be our desire? To want to do right. To want to know what true love is. And to forsake what true love is not. I would say so. The world has taught that women. Are to wear makeup. And become skinny. And to, be, and to, and to have a. A firm. A figure. So that guys will. Date them. Fall in love with them. What a twisted, shallow world we live in. And that is a dangerous, a very dangerous perspective on love. The world has demoralized both you and I, women and men, completely. And for us guys, it gets worse. They tell girls to date guys that have muscles, that are intellectual, that have a pretty face, that look good, that have a lot of money, sophisticated, confident, Overtly, big muscles, proud about themselves. This is a perspective of what the world considers love to be. Do you see holiness in any aspect of that at all? I don't. I did many years ago, but God got a hold of me because I was desperate to know the truth about love. We have a twisted view on love in this world today because we choose to allow ourselves to be blinded in deception and distraction. And you and I are guilty of that. What the world has taught love to be is a fairy tale, happily ever after. But the problem is, it doesn't show you what goes on behind the scenes. Until you take the blinders off your eyes from the world. And go to the source of where true love started and began and has no end. It's beautiful.
beautiful once you realize it. The Bible speaks in Proverbs 6 about women to avoid. In other areas of the Bible, it speaks about promiscuous women. That a God-fearing Christian, follower of Christ, should not get with. Proverbs chapter 31 explains the type of woman that a man of God should be with. Proverbs 31.10 says this, Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Wow. You know, as I, I look at that scripture and that text, I come to the realization of, but most guys don't think of a girl as a ruby. They look at her as trash. Or they look at, at the woman as, a, as an object. A plaything. No, but the Bible speaks life into a woman. It also says in the New Testament that a woman is crowned with glory and honor. Beautiful words to know that. In the scripture of Proverbs 31, it also says favor is deceitful and beauty is vain but a woman that fears the Lord she shall, she will be praised. And the last verse in the